CJ, can you hear us all right? Yes, sir. All right, you're part of Trailblazer PR history. This is our very first Skype press conference uh, that we've done, so we'll go ahead and uh, start it off uh, with some questions and first welcome you to the Trailblazers. So start it off with Joe Freeman from the Oregonian. Hey, CJ, can you just first give your, uh, your general reaction and impression of the Blazers and getting drafted by them? And, and did you kind of have a feeling this might happen, you might wind up here? Um, well, my first impressions, I'm, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. I know they have a great organization. Uh, it starts at the top and all the way down to the bottom, you know, with Paul and, and Neil and those guys. So just thankful for the opportunity. And then in terms of the roster, you know, it's a great roster. You've got a great point guard. You've know, you got Lamarcus Aldridge, Nick Batum. You know, some young players and Will Barton and uh, Myers Leonard. So, I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm just thankful to be a part of this organization and, and a part of this city. And uh, I, I kind of knew they were interested in me. I wasn't sure if, if they would take me at 10 or if I'd be there at 10. But I, once, once I got closer and closer there, I kind of knew it was 10 or 11. CJ, this is Scott Lynn from Fox Sports Radio 620 here in Portland. Uh, can you just talk about uh, your relationship with uh, uh, Damian Lillard? Uh, how, has he reached out to you already tonight? Yeah, he texted me earlier. Um, I had 178 text messages, so I just looked, went down to try to find, you know, close family members or, or people of importance, and he's definitely at the top of the list uh, of being the point guard of the, of the team I'm playing for. So, you know, he texted me, we exchanged you know, a couple of messages to each other, and I look forward to getting out there and playing with him. You know, he's a, a tremendous player, and he's where I'm trying to be. You know, playing all 82 games as a rookie, you know, leading the NBA in minutes. That's a great guy to kind of learn from and kind of model your game after. Hey, CJ, this is Chris Haynes of Comcast Sportsnet. CJ, you talk about you and Dane playing, playing in the backcourt together. What is your natural position in the league? I'm a basketball player. Um, you know, I've played the one and the two all my life. A lot of two in college, but a little bit of one. And I just think that, you know, it's situational. It depends on the roster. And I'm comfortable with, with running the show. I'm comfortable with playing off somebody that's running the show. So it really just depends on what the coach wants. But at the same time, you know, with my ability to knock down shots and, and kind of get others going, I, I would say that I would be playing, you know, both positions at some point. CJ Candace Buckner from the Vancouver Columbian. Uh, there was one point after the ninth pick that you were shown on television kind of dancing in your chair. <laughs> what, what were you thinking about like, at that time? And uh, but just why were you dancing? I didn't know they caught that. I'm sorry you had to see that. But um, no, I, I kind of knew uh, that was about to get picked and I just wanted to kind of dance and, and, and show my excitement. But I didn't know the camera was on me. I don't think I would have danced if I knew the camera was on me. <laughs> hey, CJ, Joe Freeman again. After you broke the bone in your foot, was there ever a point when you wondered if maybe you wouldn't get this opportunity or, or maybe you had uh, lost your chance to have this happen? Oh, no. I knew it wasn't a career-ending injury. Um, I had a, a very well-polished resume. I had done a lot in my collegiate career, 109, 111 games, I, have, I believe, starting 109. So, I mean, there's plenty of, of film to pull from, and guys have come back from this injury in a hurry. You know, it's nothing compared to an ACL or an Achilles tear. So, you know, I knew I would be back at some point. I was just more worried about college, you know, my college career kind of being over and having to watch my team after I decided to come back and getting hurt during your senior year is kind of depressing, so it was a tough time. CJ, this is Jason Quick from the Oregonian. I think I read in a story where you were chubby at one point, <laughs> and when did that end? <laughs> I use that term very loosely, chubby. I had chubby cheeks, and I was very skinny, 5'2", um, my freshman year, 5'7", my sophomore year. Uh, I don't think I weighed over 150 pounds in my junior year, so I wasn't chubby in the sense that I had, like, a gut. I just had uh, rather large cheeks. Other questions? Hey, CJ, Candace again from the um, Columbian. You said earlier that, you know, you and Dame had texts back and forth, especially during his rookie year. Is there one thing that sticks out to you as far as his advice while he was going through the rookie year um, that you're going to take moving into yours? Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest things he said was, you know, be yourself first and foremost. You know, do what got you there because this league will eat you up. It's a man's league. Uh, you hear that term very loosely, but they mean it. You know, on and off the court, you got to hold yourself to a higher standard just because people are always watching you and, and kind of waiting for you to mess up. You know, the media, you know, I, I was a journalist major. I know we love stories. So whenever you can get a story, you want to twist it and turn it in, in any way you can. So don't, don't give them anything. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, one of the things he told me was that, you know, don't be content with just being drafted, and I'm not. 
they'll be content with just making money because you, know, you can make money doing a lot of things, but not, not too many times in, in life you get paid to do things you love. So you know, I take this game very seriously, and I've played it for free all my life. I'm thankful I get paid now, but I would, you know, like I said before, I love it. C.J. Carey Eggers from the Portland Tribune. You were a journalism major. Are you graduated, and uh, are you going to come out here trying to steal some of our jobs? I'll let you guys keep your jobs for now, but I have graduated. I graduated May 20th, and uh, you know, my job is to be a basketball player. That's my job. You know, I was drafted here to, to come in and contribute and, and help the team win games, and that's what I'm going to do first and foremost. But at the same time, I'd be foolish not to use my degree and not to keep it alive for uh, my career after basketball. C.J. Joe Freeman again. What's been your interaction with the Blazers tonight, and, and have you spoken with Neil or, or the owner, Paul Allen, and, and what did they say to you? Uh, I spoke with Neil, Paul, and uh, Coach Terry uh, probably a half hour ago. I don't know. I'm losing track of the time over here. But uh, I'm just basically you know, happy I'm a part of the organization. We're talking through some things in terms of summer league when I, when I need to get out there and uh, talked a little bit about how I'll be utilized. You know, I think it's a great opportunity for me to kind of learn from Dame, you know, but at the same time I can play alongside him. And, and be comfortable with running the show when he slides over to the two because I know he does that as well with his ability to, to knock down shots and kind of well, he's been he's been in charge of getting the team going and kind of running the team but I think I'll allow him to kind of score more and, and do those type of things as well. CJ this is Chris again uh, being that you and Dane both come from small colleges four-year guys is there going to be any pressure on you to not duplicate not duplicate Dane's performance you know his rookie year but you know to have some level of success. Um, there's no pressure. I'm not Damian Lillard. There's no mistake in that. You know, he's a terrific player, but we're two different individuals. You know, I would love to win, win Rookie of the Year, but I'd also like to make the playoffs and win a championship. So, you know, I'm willing to play a role and do whatever's necessary to win. You know, I'm going to contribute in some way, form, or fashion, and I'm going to play at a high level at some point. And I'm confident in saying that because I'm, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do whatever is necessary. So, you know, there is pressure. There's always pressure. And I was the 10th pick in the draft. I was in the lottery. I come from a small school. You know, people would say I'm not supposed to be here coming from Canton, Ohio, you know. They didn't expect me to be in this position, but, you know, I'm ready. And I'm ready to contribute right away. I'm ready to help out. You know, I'm ready to do whatever is necessary. CJ, Jason Quick from the Oregonian. What is it about you and Damian? How did you form this connection and uh, when and, and how has it developed? Um, and we met over Twitter, honestly. You know, social networks are great. Uh, at some point, we exchanged numbers, and I just kind of reached out to him, asking him questions about, you know, what it's like to play in the NBA, what it's like to make the transformation, you know, how's the spacing, you know, is it as hard as they say it is? And one of the things he said is that there's a lot more spacing, it's easier to score, harder to, to defend. So <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a man's league, and I look forward to playing. And I'd say our relationship is pretty good. You know, honestly, you know, we're in similar situations in terms of coming from a small school and, and having a lot of question marks. And it's always good to be able to reach out to somebody. You know, this league is a fraternity on the court. You know, if you're on opposing teams, you dislike each other during the games, but you see guys socializing off the court because it's a multi-billion dollar business. Can you, can you give more details about when that started and then how frequent the, the communication um, was? A year and a half ago, if I had to guess, and how frequent. I mean, we didn't talk every day or anything like that, but we were in contact, you know, throughout uh, my senior year and when I broke my foot I reached out to him again and kind of asked him about his rehab and, and checked in with him every, every, few, every so often and every now and then I would text him you know, after a big game or even after a bad game and uh, you know just to see, see how everything was going and, and just tell him you know the better you play the better I look so keep killing him I said don't let up you know it's just not very often you know mid-major guys go, up, go in an NBA and succeed so you know our chances are slim, and the better we do, the more opportunities other guys will get. Is it fair to say that that relationship is unique, or did you reach out to other NBA players as well? Um, I'd say it's pretty unique. I've reached out to other NBA players you know, before in terms of guys in my agency, and I spoke with Chris Paul for a little while after I went to his camp uh, heading into my senior year, but well, he's one of the guys I've talked to a little bit consistently. More questions? Okay, that'll wrap it up. CJ, we appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you out here in Portland. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me.